Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the gospel reading that Pastor Lee just read for you. I share with you today at verse 9. Jesus saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Come, follow me. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Have you ever had someone gossip about you? Have you ever had someone say some bad things about you? Of course you have. We have all had people gossip about us in the past. I read a story about a man named Eddie Bueno who had a lot of people gossiping about him. You see, Eddie was from a large family. He had 18 brothers and sisters. Wow. Well, Eddie had a bad reputation with his family around town. Now, the local newspaper in Denver, Colorado, carried a story about his family. And the story was entitled, Denver's Biggest Crime Family. In the story, it told how 15 of Eddie's siblings had been arrested before. Eddie had never been arrested. Eddie was not a criminal. And yet, people all over town gossiped about him being this terrible criminal. In the word of God before us today, we come across a man named Matthew. Now, the Bible tells us Matthew was a tax collector. And people around town were gossiping all about him because of his profession as a tax collector. He had a terrible reputation. And so, I think you can imagine how shocked he was when Jesus called him to be one of his disciples. Let me explain why Matthew was so shocked that Jesus asked him to be one of his close disciples. Back in the day of Matthew and Jesus, the tax collectors were hated by the Jewish people. Tax collectors were people that were hired by the Roman government to collect taxes from the people. Well, the Romans, they didn't pay these tax collectors very much money. And so they were expected, these tax collectors, to collect extra money from the Jewish people. And so you can imagine the Jewish people hated him. They kept saying they were overcharging him. They were stealing from him. And so the tax collector profession had a terrible reputation. I mean, people, they considered Matthew to be this terrible sinner. And they never would trust him. They wouldn't even allow people like Matthew to go to worship in the local temple. So I think you can see why these Jewish religious leaders today, when they saw Jesus was hanging out with Matthew, they said, why is Jesus hanging out with sinners and tax collectors? Well, Matthew saw this moment when Jesus asked him to be a disciple he saw it as one of the greatest moments of his life. As Matthew is writing to us today, do you kind of wonder why he didn't express his anger with these religious leaders? I believe it's because when Matthew's telling this story today, it's not about him. I believe Matthew is telling this story today to talk about the love and the compassion of Jesus for all people. It's about what God can do through people like Matthew. Today I want to show you how, like Matthew, what God can do through you and through me. First of all, we learn today that God can use imperfect people. God can use an imperfect person like Matthew to serve him, and God can use people like you and me to serve him as well. Professor Audrey West once said, Jesus calls people as they are, from where they are, being 
who they are. Why would Jesus do that? Why would Jesus want to call people who are, are sinners? Why would Jesus want to call people who continually gossiped about other people around them? Why would Jesus do that? Why would Jesus want to have people like that close to him? Well, Jesus once said that he came into this world not to call perfect people. But Jesus said he came into this world to call sinners. Wow. That just shows how different Jesus is from you and me. Reverend Barclay Thompson shared this story about his life. He said, one day I was sitting in a classroom at the University of Chicago, and a Lutheran friend of mine named Jay Alanis came up to me and said, Barclay, God is here, and God's going to do something with your life. Barclay said, I told him, no, he isn't. God wouldn't have anything to do with heathen people like me. And Jay said to him, it is heathen people whom God calls. Wow. It's people that really don't know Jesus yet whom Jesus calls. It's no wonder that Matthew wrote this question about the religious leaders of his day. Why is Jesus hanging out with sinners and tax collectors, it's because Matthew wanted people to know about the love of God, who calls people as they are, from where they are, being who they are. Jesus uses imperfect people to follow him. Jesus used people like Matthew, and he can use people who are sinners like you and me. Secondly, we learn today that God can use our actions to reflect the goodness of God. God wants to use all people to serve him. If we really love God, it'll show in our actions. The goodness of God, the love of God, would show in our actions, wouldn't they? I mean, that's God's plan for us. God wants to use us to share his love with other people around us. God wants us to show people where they can find some help with their sins, where they can find forgiveness for the things they do wrong. God wants us to show people where they can find some hope in their lives, where they can find eternal life with Jesus in heaven. Zach Lambert, a pastor in Austin, Texas, told about a conversation he had with a senior adult woman who visited in his church. This woman was in a wheelchair. She said to the pastor, she said that she was relatively new in town, didn't have any family there, and had just very few friends. She told Pastor Lambert that for 18 months, the city services were supposed to build a wheelchair ramp outside her home, but they hadn't done it. Pastor Lambert said, we can do that for you. And the woman was surprised. She said, you would do that for me? And Pastor Lambert said, of course we would. That's what the people of God are all about. And some members of the church went and built that wheelchair ramp outside of her home for this woman. We show our faith in God the best when we live out the love and the goodness of God in our lives. I mean, that's what we Christians are all about, aren't we? We're about showing the love and the goodness of God through our actions in this world. That's why we help one another when we have needs in our congregation. That's why we help people in need in our community. It's in our actions where we reflect the love and the goodness of God in this world. Thirdly, we learn today that we really are the best people to share the love of God with others. Matthew was shocked when Jesus came to him and asked him to be a disciple. We too are shocked that Jesus would want us to come and follow him as well. We know that we're sinners. We know we don't show the love of Jesus all the time in our lives. 
But Jesus still loves us, and he wants us to tell others all about him. When Denise Locke moved to North Carolina, she decided to volunteer in the local soup kitchen. Now, Denise did this because she wanted to find something in her life that would kind of be nice to other people and would make her feel good about herself. Well, Denise found out that as she served in this local soup kitchen, she started finding relationships with the people who came to get food each week. She found out that she cared about them, and they became like her friends. She said, I found out that Billy likes to drink Mountain Dew. I found out that Donnie likes when I cut his meat for him because it's really hard for, with his misshapen hand. I found out that Susie likes to get hugs from people. Well, the more I worked in this soup kitchen, the more these people became really special to me. And I found that I could share the love of Jesus with them, and I could be like Jesus to them. The religious leaders here today, they saw Matthew as a terrible sinner, and they avoided him. Jesus saw Matthew as someone whom he could love, as someone he cared about, as someone he could use to do great things in his life. Why did Jesus choose people like Matthew to be one of his close disciples? It's because Jesus loved people like that. It's because Jesus knew he could work through them. It's because they felt God's love for them and they wanted to show their love for God through helping others. Jesus wants you and me to be his followers here today. Oh, Jesus knows we're not perfect, but he loves us anyway. And he wants us to show our love through our acts of kindness that we do for people around us. He wants us to share his love with those around us. Jesus wants to use you and me to do that. I encourage you today to look for opportunities where Jesus can use you to show his love through helping others around you. You're going to find there are opportunities that come up every day for you to do that. God bless us all as we continue to be his followers in our lives. Amen. Please now rise as we join together in the next song of praise.